So today I've got uh, my new Kvasser U100 fresh out of the box. It is a USB to 9 pin D sub standard adapter. Um, we're going to use the Kvasser 120 ohm terminator. Uh, that's the part number for 120 ohm terminator in the connector. So at one end of the CAN network, you have a terminator. And we're also going to use the Copley uh, ADP-NK USB to serial, uh, I'm sorry, 9-pin uh, to RJ45 adapter. Uh, that comes with the little 9-pin uh, to RJ45. You can tighten it down with the screws. Terminator at this end, and in the bag with the ADPNK, you also get the 120 ohm terminator for the last node. I've just got a short little CAN network here. You probably don't need a terminator at each end for such a short travel, but I'm going to recommend a terminator at each end of the CAN network because that's how it's defined. And so this would probably be, if you had multiple drives, uh, the terminator would be at, at the end of the network, of course, and then a terminator at the beginning. Um, I also am using a Copley USB to RJ11 to initially connect to the drive so that I can set the CAN address switches to a proper node and make sure the drive's in a CAN mode rather than uh, some other mode. But let's take a, a closer look at the Kvasser USB 100. There's a data sheet. It does FD for fast data. We're still developing that on our plus drives, but eventually we'll get there. Um, you can see good specs. There's a normal CAN bit, one megabit, fast data, eight megabits for some fast data. Uh, there's some typical current consumption on the adapter. It's got some fancy lights that show up. And it's operating is minus 40 to 85, so wide sort of rugged temperature range. There's also a user guide. I like a user guide because it has more specs in it. And we see there's a 20 mess, 20,000 messages per second limit. That's uh, pretty good. We should be able to hit one or two millisecond update rates from uh, motion software. Just make sure you're not flooding the network with messages. You could run into a data rate limit. Um, the drivers are available for Windows and Linux, and there's all kinds of software on the Kvasser webpage. Um, I was going to show the standard connection here and how to use a scope. Um, so let's take a peek at uh, CAN bus cabling app note, and you can see the standard uh, for CAN open. There's the pinout for can high, can low, and can ground on the RJ45, and the pinout on the 9-pin D-sub. So really, it's can ground, can low, and can high that need to pass, pass through. Um, you'll see our adapter also has the, the corresponding pins. Uh, there's no connection on pins 4 and 5. Uh, so four and five is reserved and can shield, of course. Uh, you should run a shield if you have a shield. I'm using unshielded twisted pair. So the only thing worse than not having a shield, of course, is having a shield and not connecting it to earth. So if you have a shield, you must connect it to earth. Uh, anyways, um, I'm going to connect to the drive using the Copley serial port. So using the Com Wizard serial port, pick it out, 115 kilobit, that's the default. And I make sure the drive's in the proper mode of operation before I try to connect my Kvasser. I'm in a CAN mode, that's good for CAN open. And then I check, make sure I have a valid one megabit. That's the default. Use switches. I turn the switches so that it's uh, node address one. And you can see the drive is address one in a pre-op state. So everything's good there. So I'm going to disconnect my serial port. And I'm going to connect in my USB to CAN adapter. Only goes in one way. Uh, you'll see here that the adapter appears. Uh, if you don't have the drivers, of course, you can look at, you know, 
updating the drivers and you can browse your computer. They'll be put in this program files Kvasser drivers folder. So when you download the drivers, they'll automatically install here. So this is where you go to find them. Uh, I, of course, couldn't install drivers myself without help from the IT department. You have to be a super root user with admin privileges, and I don't have any privileges here anymore on my computer. It's not my computer. Uh, but this device is working properly. Um, we can also see that there's some uh, communication going on here. Uh, you've got the green indicators on the adapter. And you also have a blinky uh, pre-op mode here, no red indicator, flashing lights, a uh, red indicator for the status. I don't, I don't have the high voltage hooked up for my great big motor, little tiny drive. Um, so let's take a look at uh, running CME. Uh, it's not using the serial adapter now, but using the communication wizard CAN network. So this will look in the operating system for the drivers that are installed. And uh, it sees the drivers. It sees the Kvasser, not the Copley. It's a channel zero. And the bit rate says one megabit. You can't read that because it's not a bug. It's just an undesired feature. But I know that I'm at one megabit by default, and so is the drive. So I'm just gonna hit finish. All right, let's try that again. Tools, communication wizard, can, click, one megabit, finish, scanning, found a node. So it goes from one to 127, looks for everything. It'd make a big tree here, but um, we're connected. So. Uh, this is a good indication that not only CME works, but also CML, because we're using the CML as part of the, uh, you know, the wrapper around the drive. Uh, CME sends a serial binary message. And um, so basically, we've got a CAN drive. We can use the web page to find all the CAN drives. It's a nice filter. Uh, I'm using the ADPNK. 9 pin RJ45 adapter with some cable and a terminator. There's a connector kit, a serial cable kit. Uh, again, Kvasser has some good tools. Uh, Can King for monitoring messages and uh, doing some analysis. That's pretty good. Of course, while you're running the Can Master, you can use CME uh, up and running to look at traces and do tuning. You normally use CME for getting the initial tuning done, but you can also monitor while the CAN master is talking. A basic concept is the DS402 protocol for motion control. You don't need to know anything about PDOs, NMTs, SDOs, sync messages, and the state machine. If you're using the Copley software to do motion control, we will send commands to the control word, read the status word, set the target position, and initiate moves toggle in the bit four and the control word to initiate the move. There's standard default PDOs that are mapped in all CAN open drives according to the spec. Uh, we, of course, remap them with our uh, CMO and CML software. But the basic idea is there's uh, objects for motion control based on the 402. And all these objects are things you can read and write, you know, read the position, write to the commanded position. Um, the CMO software is for Visual Studios. It's like a .NET framework for C Sharp or VB.NET. And you can see a bunch of examples. Uh, you put the examples together and you can do motion control. Um, more specifically with the Kvasser, you open up, say, the basic move example. You see the code, blah, 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 one megabit, can open port name. Of course, instead of Copley zero, you'll write Kvasser zero. Read some values from the drive, push a button, make a move. Looks real simple. Even an electrical engineer can do it. Um, it's, uh, it's visual and it's basic. 
And again, you can run uh, CME, CMO, slash CML, the C++ source code, and CanKing all at the same time. I haven't installed the latest CanKing. Uh, there's other videos for using Kvasser in like an industrial PC. This is a PCI Mini Express uh, adapter. Uh, the Copley CML C++ source code library is the source code and you sign a license agreement, a one-time fee, and then it's yours. It's like the open source code stuff, except for it works and you know we're the ones fixing it rather than people adding strange code to the open source stuff. So this can be used on a machine, you ship to a customer. Open source stuff is eh, a little questionable, but um, this has got like 20 years worth of experience using can open and of course does some stuff with ethercat now but it's got some built-in path planning arcs lines curves uh pt pvts um pulse at position inputs for haptic devices and uh, that's that's the basic here uh for the uh for the adapter um I'm going to mention a little bit here while I've got a few seconds, the measuring of uh, a signal. So you, if you measure two channels on an oscilloscope and you add an invert using the math button, you can look at the signal to make sure it's in the valid range. Uh, you shouldn't have excessive ringing, overshoot, droop, or tilt. Um, so that was the, the basic idea of Channel one, channel two, uh, using two scope probes, you can measure can high and can low. And oh, look, it's not a green light, it's an amber light. That means some data is transmitting back and forth. That's cool. Um, but so we add and invert these with the math button. Uh, you can just look at the signal differentially. And that's really what you want to do is measure a can signal uh, with respect to ground. So there's can ground can high and can low, add an invert, and make sure that the signals uh, give you the proper uh, proper levels according to the uh, the spec. And you, you got to be out of the forbidden zone here, out of the warning zone. And so nice square waves and, and everybody will be happy. Okay, thanks for checking out the new Kvasser U100. Um, let me know if you need any help installing drivers. Uh, you just have to become the super root user with admin privileges or buy your own computer.